The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and, when, and then when people have drunk freely an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> yes, the, um, the beginning of uh, the, the second chapter of, uh, of the Gospel of John and, uh, and the movement is, is picking up steam. Yeah, this is, again, another um, epiphany story. Yes, yeah, so we, we know that the, the epiphany uh, is God's revelation or manifestation uh, of himself to the world as, as man. At least this is they say, our, our common th theological uh, grouping uh, for, um, uh, for these particular epiphany stories. The, this, the, the way that we are going to use uh, in, in the liturgical calendar and in uh, Catholic theology, what we're going to say is epiphany, manifestation, revelation. Revelation of God as man. So we see here in the manger that yeah, God revealing himself uh, as man to the Magi. We're going to celebrate that uh, this weekend. Uh, we have um, Jesus' baptism and the great uh, theophany. This is my beloved son, right? The revelation of, of, of God again. Jesus coming on the, on, the, on the human scene. And then here, the, the, uh, the wedding at Cana in Galilee. We take, we take John's word that this is the first sign. So this is, and this is, uh, as, as he concludes this little, um, this little pericope, and so revealed his glory, right? Revealed revelation, manifestation, epiphany, and so revealed his glory. But here we have, a, we have, um, uh, I don't know, some little, an embedded asset perhaps here in the, in, the, in the gospel story where we see that this is not the full revelation of, of God as man. Where do, we, where do we get that from? We get that from Jesus himself. When he says, woman, my, my hour has not yet come. Yeah, so although this is, this is the first sign, perhaps the first stage or the first step in the revelation of, of God as man in the public life of Jesus in, in, his, uh, in his ministry, uh, 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 an event that, uh, that so well uh, reveals to us what it is God intends uh, to do in us and work through us, we see that this is, this is not his hour. When is his hour? It's the next time we see in the Gospel of John Mary's appearance, Mary's appearance, which is at the foot of the cross. And this is the revelation of God's glory. This is, this is um, here the, the, the wedding feast at Cana, the great, uh, the great work of God that, that Jesus accomplishes here is, is a sign and, and foretaste of, of that reality where heaven and earth are brought more firmly and more fully together in, he, in the death of Jesus. And this, and this is, of course, something uh, to be pondered, and we'll, we'll have plenty of time as we work our way through the liturgical year to do precisely that. But um, there's something really quite uh, remarkable here, kind of outside of the, the transformation of, of water into wine, the great ordinariness of the scene, and, whether, and I think this gives us an opportunity for ourselves uh, mentally in, in prayer to enter into this scene for ourselves and, and to experience what all is, is going on. There's, there's a bit of hustle and bustle, right? I mean, that's, 
that's pretty standard for us in, in our lives, but there doesn't seem to be, there's not much direction in the scene until Jesus and the role that he's playing starts to push into the, into the forefront. But before that, there's this, there's this activity, there's good activity, there, there are things going on, there are good things going on, right? A, uh, a wedding feast, a big celebration, and, and, a, and, a, and a worthwhile celebration at that. Jesus' mother is there, right? Mary is there. She's, in, she's invited the, the guys. They're all, all going to be there, the, this, this celebration between, you know, two little towns in the, in the, in the remote corner of, of the Roman Empire. Here, you know, here we have um, a great, wholesome... Uh, family celebration, right? And everybody's, everybody's joining in, right? There's a reason why they run out of wine. It's because it's a good celebration. Do you know? They're, they're doing it well. Whatever, they're, whatever they intended to do there, they're, they're doing it well. They're celebrating well. And yet, and yet they're running out. And there's, there's some sense, I think, here. Of course, it, John, John's gospel is, is laden with um, symbolism, right? It, it, bear, it bears a lot of symbolism. There's a, there's a lot to explore. There are many ways that, that God has, has spoken to his people, to the Christian people, um, for, for many centuries through John's gospel. And, uh, and John himself is, is, uh, is well aware of the fact that uh, so much of, of what, he, what he gives us uh, can be taken in, in many different ways and bearing, of course, bearing one meaning on the, on the whole, but meanings with, within that meaning. And he's, he's quite happy to allow us to enter in where God is calling us to enter in, entering into this event of God's plenty, of God's super abundant love, wherever it is that, that we're going to enter. But I think here, right, they run out. And I don't, I don't know if this is our experience, but uh, if, if, we're, if we're planning our own parties and seeing them through to execution, there comes a time where the uh, where the wine runs out. Now I'm not. I know. I'm sure that some of you the wine runs out. Like I uh, say, actual like actually literally the wine runs out. Mm, most of us not, but maybe some. But what I mean, what is what is the the wine that runs out? Is it is it a is it the what we what we would consider to be an appropriate joy, like a real relishing in the event? Is it, and, and if we, is it if we go back to the first reading, how it closes, children, be on your guard against idols. Is it actually the times of celebration for us are challenging? It's, it's actually interesting that the party for us comes, uh, yeah, it's, it's before the epiphany, but we're also pushing towards the end of our liturgical observance of the Christmas season. Now, is it that the, par- the party comes at the end so that we're kind of engage in this way. Yeah, like it's, it's hard for us to party from Christmas Day all the way through the Epiphany or even the baptism of the Lord. That's what we're, that's what we're called to do. Right? We, live these, we live these days of penance in Advent to prepare us to be able to celebrate, to give a, a real kind of long celebration um, it, it, at the uh, at real, you know, that we're participating in, in the feast that, that is Christmas and the joy that flows forth from that event. Are we able to or does, is, is the wine running dry? Yeah, is it running out? And where do we go when that happens? Now, this is, can I say, this is the, the, the wine running out in this sense, in the sense that I'm preaching on it, you know, this, this morning, kind of our, our joy, our satisfaction in, in what God has provided, you know, the, the, the life, like the fullness of life that we're, that we're experiencing. I mean, we might even say happiness. I, I don't care what Joseph says, okay? It's, uh, <laughs> I don't care what baby Joseph has to say about it. <laughs> well, maybe he's expressing the wine running dry, right? <laughs> we, uh, we have to get that. But, he, but this is it. There is, how does the wine runs dry when we fix our hearts on something other than the true and living God? And we need all the help in the world to get our hearts back focused on... He has a problem with me. It's not, it's not your issue. It's not your issue. We, <laughs> we need all the help in the world to get our hearts back focused on the true and living God. And when we do, what do we see? We see the, we see the wine flowing again, right? What happens is the wine is made ready for us when Jesus steps to the forefront of the scene. That's the lesson, right? And, and not just that. It's not just when, because of course, Jesus is stepping forward to the forefront of the scene, 
But we have okay, the, the perennial instruction of Mary to guide us into this kind of um, wine or wine making or, or merry making event. And is that Mary is going to say, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. And it's only when we do whatever he tells us that the wine can flow freely. And we say the wine, and wine always has this kind of, um, this sense of fulfillment, this sense of, um, of course, merrymaking, but joy, the joy that only God can give. But if we, again, if we put, if we, if we are not aligned with him, if, we, if our hearts instead are, are um, uh, dragged off course in, into, say, centering on something other than God, then the wine runs dry. But here, here is God then stepping into the, the human scene and um, taking the initiative himself to provide for us in our need. Of course, now, look, this is a, this is a very small event when it comes down to it, right? Did this couple, we don't even know who this couple is, right? But who... Did they ever think that in you know in in planning for for their wedding and can I say in in the in the poor execution of of their wedding feast did they ever did they ever think that they would go down in history that this event would would go down in history we'd be recounting it and you know most most churches in the world certainly most Catholic churches in the world this day two thousand two thousand years on did they think that this was going to happen you know but no this but here. What I want you to see is not then the greatness of that, but it's, it's smallness. This is, this is a very small thing. But God taking the initiative, Jesus coming to the forefront, our doing whatever he tells us to do, that's what makes it an event of the greatest historical import. And that is, that's true for us as well. Now, they don't bring their need to him. Mary notices their need, but there, there is need, yeah? And whether they're in focus, they're out of focus, whatever it is, it's, it's theirs and it's ours, just as the servants in the scene, really. It's, it's ours to put ourselves at Jesus' beck and call. It's ours to say, okay, I'm, he I'm here. The needs that I see that, that surround me, I'm, I'm sensitive to, I'm alive to, and I'm going to bring it all to Jesus and allow him to, again, to, to enter the scene, and if not enter, come to the forefront of the scene. He, he wants now, here and now, to come to the forefront of the scene of our life. And it's ours to allow him to do that. He won't... He, he won't put. He will push us further than we than we think we want. Do you know what I mean? But it, it's not like he's going to force himself on us. So we have we have to in in his great love in his desire to provide for us. We have to allow him to come to the forefront of the scene, and we have to entrust ourselves to him. And if that's in perceived need, okay, so be it. Good. We're lining up with the rest of history here. But if it's if it's not, if it's in if it's in our joy, you know, the, the wine hasn't run out for us, good. Then we come to him with a a, a joy filled thank offering that we're that we're going to be making here at the altar. All all good as well. But Jesus has to come to the forefront of the scene. And then we do we want to put ourselves at his disposal to say, yes, okay, Lord, whatever it is, whatever it is, we will do whatever you tell us. And we know then in that moment that we are doing whatever he tells us, we're not simply receiving for ourselves or allowing God to provide for us. We're also allowing God to provide for his world through us. Yeah, and this, and this is uh, when, when Jesus comes on the scene, the revelation of God as man, he has work to do. And he's calling us into it. The great thing is it's work that we get to do inebriated by, by the Holy Spirit, right? Inebriated by the blood of Christ. We have, to cons we have to consume him so that we can be consumed by him. And being consumed by him, we can go and bring the, the, the light and warmth of, of his divine life and love to everyone we encounter.